Hey, what's up everyone? On this video, I want to go over some games from the original PlayStation. This console has a huge library of games, but I just want to focus on three. The first one I want to go over is Codeca. This game is published by Infobrains, the same company that brought you Alone in the Dark. This game takes place in the late 1800s in Wales. The majority of the game takes place in this monastery. The self-titled character Kadeka meets with Edward and James in this haunted mansion throughout the game. Gameplay wise, you take control of Kadeka when exploring the monastery. However, when it comes to combat, you take control of Kadeka, Edward, and James in the RPG turn based style. You can equip weapons and cast spells for offense and defense. It's pretty cool to have a cool formation when in combat. I usually have Edward as the tank, while James and Kadeka buffs Edward. However, sometimes some enemies could be immune to physical attacks and you have to use magic. It could also be the other way around, like this guy. Oh, I hated fighting this guy. He's completely immune to magic, and he's taking cover shooting at you. You won't be able to deal damage to him until you destroy these crates where he's taking cover from. So you could just imagine how frustrating this could be to destroy those crates while taking shots. I was so glad I finished him off in the end. What did you do that for? I should talk about the characters. Kadeka is a gypsy with psychic powers. In fact, those powers is what drawn her to the monastery. She's always sensed things when things don't feel right. In fact, this clues the player when they're gonna encounter a boss fight. Those rooms change its appearance from a dark corrupted room to a clean bright room. Edward is the muscle of the group. He was raised from a wealthy family and grew bored of the rich life. He leads a life of exploring the world in uncharted territories. He heard stories of the monastery and decided to explore the place. I heard something in London. That the son of some rich family bought an old monastery. Spent a ton of money to convert it into a house. I heard he brought quite a lot of harlots here. Seems like he was having a great time. So, where is this monastery? That's what I want to know. I came all this way to put a poor man's fear of God into this rich bastard. You meet and save Edward when he gets poisoned by a couple in the monastery. I also like how Edward tries to flirt with Kadeka even when he's nearly dying. You're too early, Angel. I'm not dead yet. Last but not least is James. He is a priest and has a lot of connections with the monastery and the people who live in it. You first see him unconscious before encountering the monster. I use him and Kadeka as my two main spellcasters in my playthroughs. The trio, for the most part, don't get along, but they have to stick together if they want to survive. With every battle, you gain experience to level up, you gain important key items, and also, you learn spells to master. This game has four discs, but don't be intimidated with how many discs this game has. The game is actually short. The reason for the multiple discs are the CG render cutscenes. I have to say these cutscenes look great. But yeah, the CD format can only take up a limited amount of cutscene video. And that's why the game has 4 CDs. But yeah, that's Kadeka for the PlayStation. Check it out. The next game is Brave Fencer of Musashi. This is brought to you by Squaresoft after the success of Final Fantasy VII. However, this plays nothing like Final Fantasy. If I was to compare Brave Fencer Musashi, the closest thing I could think of is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This game is about the legendary Musashi to save a princess to get back to his time. Not only that, but Musashi gets to know and help the villagers of all you can eat. Yes, that's the name of the kingdom. The game also features a day and night cycle that reflects on Musashi's stats. He will get tired and will need a rest. Aside from saving the princess, he also sets out to find these five scrolls, and with these scrolls, he can enhance his swords. Oh yeah, Musashi has the ability to copy the abilities of enemies, kinda like Kirby. Ha! <laughs> That's the second time I compared this game to a Nintendo property. Anyways, the gameplay is actually like a platformer with hack and slash elements, sprinkled with a little RPG, 
Some combats could be different when it comes to bosses, but that's what makes this game very unique. Everything is different. I have to say I love the expressions of the characters even if it's just a pixelated chibi style. I think it fits the game's personality very well. Also, the voice acting is not bad. I appreciate the voice acting in the game instead of reading the dialogue throughout. Now don't get me wrong, the game still has certain non-dialogue speeches, but I'm glad that you can encounter some voice acting. I say check it out. The last game I want to talk about is Echo Knight. This is brought to you by Fern Software. Yeah, before being popular for Dark Souls, Echo Knight was a very ambitious adventure game. Even before Dark Souls, Front Software was better known for the Armor Core and King's Fields games. But yeah, Echo Knight, this is quite the game. Alright, as far as the main story, you play the role of Richard Osman, and he is summoned by the police to investigate the case of your missing father, Harry. The house seems to be burnt down and abandoned. Maybe arson was the cause. Who knows? Anyways, you have this key that was mailed to you from Harry. You use the key to open his grandfather clock to explore this hidden room. You'll find this book and you're automatically triggered back in time to this train. Now, this is a common theme in Echo Knight. You interact with an important item and it will send you to a time to solve a puzzle from an event in the past. In the case of the train, you witness a duel with an older man and a younger guy. A young girl sits idle in between. The older man shoots his opponent. It's later revealed the man who got shot is your father. He holds a blue stone that was given to him from the girl we saw earlier. And this stone is supposed to be a key item that would always protect her. Anyways, the main environment of the game will be the ship called the Orpheus. It's a ship that went missing and it involves that blue stone and a blade with a red stone that the older man was holding. You're summoned to the ship in the past once you interact with this painting. And basically the whole game's plot is to discover what happened to your father, the connection with the young girl and the older guy, and why the ship went missing. This is a really good story in how you discover the plot. As far as gameplay, this in a way plays like a first person point and click. You interact with some items or even NPCs, which by the way are ghosts from the ship, and you trigger an event to solve these puzzles. Solving these puzzles will bring closure to the mysteries from the past. The controls are kind of weird, very similar to Keen's Field's controls. In fact, there is a specific setting for Keen's Field players, but what I mean is that you could use the shoulder buttons to strafe side to side or look up and down. You can still use the D-pad to move, so don't let the controls discourage you to play this game. It'll be quick to get used to. The friendly ghosts are silhouettes that provide story quests. They're pretty much in limbo and you can help them pass on just by bringing closure to the events of what happened in the ship. Once the truth is exposed, the ghost will pass on. Now you don't have to bring closure to all the ghosts, but it feels very satisfying to have them pass on. There are some hostile ghosts and to deal with them is similar, but to bring closure to them, you first want to avoid them because they are out for blood. But once you find a specific sentimental item to them, they will pass on and let you progress in the ship. Once you progress throughout the ship, you start to realize that the ship is adjacent to other locations. And it reminds me of how rewarding it is to explore and unlock shortcuts. I really like this. It definitely reminds me of the Dark Souls formula of exploring and finding shortcuts. Something that they did back in this game. I really like this a lot. I highly recommend it. However, I will say this. This is an adventure game first, then horror. So if you're expecting like a scary game, this is not it. However, this is really a great game. Check it out. Alright, so that's three gems on the PlayStation. I really enjoy my experience in them for different reasons. I like Kadeka for its atmosphere and storytelling. It's a natural good story. As far as Brave Friends from Musashi, it's a fun hack and slash platformer RPG. There's always a different flavor of playing the game. And as for Echo Knight, oh man, I love getting lost in exploring that ship. And to fully get that true good ending, you really have to invest with those lost souls in the ship. 
This is really a tough one to choose which is my favorite of the three games, but for now, I will say I like Echo Knight. I do plan on playing the sequels of these games in the future. So yeah, Shadow Hearts will be on the channel soon, Samurai Legend Musashi 2, and the Echo Knight sequels as well. This was a fun journey to stream these games, and I look forward to these upcoming games in the future. I believe that Kodeka's spiritual successor is called Penny Blood, and hey, I look forward to checking that out. Anyways, that's all I have for now. I'll catch you all next time. Peace.